Good afternoon guys from St. Mary's on the Isles of Scilly. Now if you saw my last video you will know that I got here on the RMV Silonian 3. Um, roughly about 2 hours and 45 minute crossing from Penzance and here yeah, what a fantastic crossing that was. Now that I'm not going back by ferry I am catching a flight because I have what they call a kind of sail fly ticket um, yeah, which enables me to fly back to Land's End. So yeah, the plan is just to have a little bit of a look around. I've never been to the Isles of Scilly before. And yeah, and then make my way up to the airport. Now I don't know how long that's going to take. I've got to find all these things out. <laughs> that's the best way to travel sometimes, isn't it? So yeah, come with me. We're going to have a little bit of an explore. It's a beautiful day for it, isn't it? And these islands are absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, we'll show you a little bit. And uh, yeah, then hopefully, time I'll be up at the airport and ready for the flight back. I'll catch you in a bit. Well I started off by heading back from Porth Cressa Beach there and into Hugh Town which is the largest settlement on the Isles of Scilly. A population of about 1100. Now there's a small park here, Parade Park, and if you head left well, that takes you back into the centre of town. If you arrive here by ferry, you're basically straight off the quayside and right into the town with its many pubs and coffee shops. And the first impressions for me were really laid back, idyllic really, uh, with some lovely buildings everywhere you looked. Now you've got everything you need here with a bank and a post office and plenty of accommodation options if you're staying over. And like I said, you're certainly not going to be stuck for something to eat or drink. Now talking about food, the town itself is kind of sandwiched, you see what I did there, uh, between two beaches, the one I was just on to the south, and to the north it's Town Beach with views back to the harbour. I'll tell you what, I did like the town but it wasn't long before I'd found a little alleyway that took me right back onto the beach again. I think this is the windier side of the island, but it's still pretty gorgeous, isn't it? Um, the Silonian 3 over there, and um, probably waiting to leave now because I don't think it stays here long. Yeah, the crew said you get about an hour in Hugh Town before you need to be back on the ferry. And not for me though, I stopped to look at this Millennium Compass Rose plaque before then heading east along the beach and onto Telegraph Road. Just coming over the brow of this small hill. Um, to another beach called Porth Mellon Beach uh, and you can actually see the airport from here it's, uh, it's not far away at all is it I don't want to get there too early and be hanging around because there is so much to explore and so many beaches as well um, by the looks of it uh, here we go check this one out wow stopping every two minutes to take photographs. It's, it's so photogenic this um, this place, it really is. The thing is, before I left Penzance I had a plan and that was to film the ferry out, which hopefully you've already seen, and film the flight back. And, and that was it really, and two videos looking at two different types of travel options, but and that kind of still was the plan, but Honestly, the island was so beautiful, I just kind of got sidetracked a little bit by the stunning scenery. And uh, yeah, just thought it was too good really to leave it out. From one beach, Porth Mallon Beach, to, well, who knows what we're going to find around this corner. Not just the beach actually, but look beyond the beach, look at all that stuff, <laughs> if you can call it that in the, in the distance, absolutely beautiful. And here goes the sky bus out of the airport, I'll be on that in a couple of hours time. Stay tuned guys because if the weather stays like this the views are going to be amazing. And that small beach I was just walking on well I'm not even sure it had a name and at the end of the beach was a small rocky outcrop I couldn't resist scrambling over 
and that brought me to Porthloo Beach with more extensive views towards the sea. And I think in the summer season you'll also be able to watch the many smaller ferries that are taking people to and from the outlying islands such as St Martins and Tresco. And behind Porthloo Beach was a small boat yard and it was at this point I decided uh, maybe I should actually turn inland and at least try and attempt to head towards the airport. Well, I've come away from the beach now and you know what it could be just like any other country lane in England. Um, well, there's quite a few cars going up and down but here's Porthloo Pond by the way. I know that because I looked it up on Google Maps. A few ducks there. Very nice. And of course, completely random, but nice to see anyway. Hello ducks. It's quite tame, aren't they? After Porthloo Pond, I walked along a short footpath which took me back onto the Telegraph Road. And here's the thing, right? Yeah, apart from a few cars, I hardly saw anyone during this walk. It was so quiet and it was a really nice warm day. You can see the airport again above the hedgerow. And I guess this is what you would call a main road. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a walk up here. Not far now, about uh, three quarters of a mile. Hopefully there should be some nice views from the top of that ridge as well. Okay, it's getting a bit warm. We are heading towards Old Town, so it's a turn down here. We won't actually reach Old Town today, unfortunately, because we've come another way. Just to take in a couple of extra beaches a little bit earlier on. Now this should take us straight up to the airport. I've got to admit, um, I wasn't quite sure if I was on the right road or not, um, until I came to this. And, yeah, does your walk to the airport look like this? It's cool, isn't it? And, yeah, so in about five minutes' time, we shall be in the terminal building. I'm sure it's, uh, well, it looks a lot um, bigger than uh, some of the Highlands, uh, Islands airports that I've been to in the recent past. Um, so, yeah, it's quite a substantial building, really. Let's go and find out what's in there. Yeah, so there's a pedestrian walkway here which gives you access to the terminal building and I'm pleased to say if you are arriving by car there are no airport drop-off or rip-off charges to be paid. Another Sky Bus service was taken off as I approached the terminal so yeah, I just stood and watched that for a short while. And at the front of the building there are a handful of trolleys, somewhere to put your dog waste and recycling and a handy bench. And then it's through the sliding doors here for departures with check-in for the sky bus on the left and for the Penzance helicopter over to the right. There are two check-in desks here and note in front of the luggage belts are some floor scales. Now weight distribution is a major factor on these small planes isn't it? And yeah space is everything. Uh, anything but a very small bag must be checked into the hold. Now around the corner from the desks is a small seating area, a post box and a good sized cafe which was open at the time of my visit. Alright oh, then guys, so yeah, the um, Isles of Scilly Airport, um, it's quite a uh, quiet airport this um, and you can tell the size of aircraft that fly from here when you look at the departure gate. There's departure gate 1 over there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's basically like Twin Otters Island, as that, that kind of thing. And when you go and have a look, I'll just show you this. Yeah, there you go. So you've got the, the Twin Otter uh, seating plan. So, yeah, hopefully, I'm not quite sure the best side of the aircraft to sit on for views, but I guess just being on my own, hopefully I'm going to try and get um, 1C or 2C, because uh, I'm here quite early. So um, let's go and... See so if there's somebody at the check-in desk we can ask.
and I was still a bit early. The check-in was about 30 minutes before my departure time, which on this occasion was 16.30. So I headed back out of the terminal to watch another aircraft taken off on its way back to the mainland, and then I was back inside again as one of the islanders full of cargo was taxiing onto the ramp. And it's quite a busy little airport really this, especially with the helicopters as well. And I was flying back to Land's End Airport today, but you know, the Sky Bus also flies direct to both Newquay and Exeter. Now check the timetables on the Isles of Scilly Travel website for further information on this. I'll link to it in the description below. And interestingly, the seats at both departure gates are numbered to replicate the aircraft you're flying on. So we were called in and told to sit on our designated seats and were then showed the seat safety briefing fast. before boarding the Adjusted. aircraft. Yeah, it's quite a sensible approach too, isn't it, this? And then it was time to make the short walk Please across the ramp and guess what? I had the best seat in the house. My seat 1A guys, so yes, we got off on the Twin Otter. Actually, um, yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? We were told to wait at the bottom of the steps to make sure the pilot was ready and then it was time to board. And note the dog box on the aircraft. A lady was already on board who was transporting her pets on this flight. Well I made my way to seat 1A which on this aircraft was on the right hand side of the 1-2 configuration and not the left as I was expecting. Hey everyone now comfortable, your seatbelt secure? You've seen the safety video in the terminal. Just have a look around now you're on board and locate your nearest emergency exit in the unlikely event we ask you to evacuate this aircraft. There are two doors at the rear, two window hatches at the front, all marked by the red headrest covers, and your life jacket underneath your seat. Fly today about 20 minutes, we'll be flying at 1,000 feet, and we'll have a chat to you next once we get airborne. Thank you. Now, as no one was sitting next to me, I had the optimum view on this flight and was made to feel really welcome by the flight deck. Now obviously I had my camera with me and yeah, I did ask if I could take a few shots and they were absolutely fine with that, didn't mind at all. I mean, they probably get a lot of tourists like me taking pictures and things but you know, I think it's just polite to ask isn't it and I'm sure they appreciated that. And our aircraft today was GCBML, a 44 year old de Havilland DHC6 Twin Otter and it spent its first 20 or so years mainly in Canada before joining the Skybus fleet in 2002. Now 17 seats is its capacity reduced by two because of the dog box. Now I would say there were probably about a dozen of us on the flight this afternoon. Well the Pratt & Whitney engine soon fired up and we made the short taxi out and onto the runway. Backtrack operation this, so uh, yeah, we had to taxi down the runway to what seemed like almost the cliff edge uh, before reaching the short turning circle and readying ourselves for departure. It's absolutely fascinating isn't it being able to sit in this seat watching the pilots do their stuff. It truly is a privilege to be able to take it all in and on such a beautiful day weather wise too. Enjoy the takeoff and I'll speak to you again during the flight.
didn't take long to get up to cruising altitude, did it? And we were soon leaving St Mary's behind. A 26.6 nautical miles between the two airports, according to the GPS on the flight deck, and a flight time, as you heard, of about 20 minutes. And after leaving the Scilly Isles, it's open sea, really, until you reach the coast off Land's End. Now, sitting in this seat, I was torn between looking out of the window and watching the flight deck operations. Now, I've been able to do this a few times now. Uh, the inter-island flights in the Orkneys are really good for seeing the action close up, too. And I'll pop a link to my trip between Papa Westray and Westray up here on the world's shortest scheduled flight. And, yeah, it really is a fascinating experience. And at the time of my flight, I was aware that the RMV Selonian 3 was also heading back to Penzance. And looking out the window on this side of the aircraft, you can just about make out the ship beyond the front of the propeller here. It, it did look better in real life, to be honest. And we were soon approaching Land's End Airport. Now sitting on the left on this particular flight, you would have had some great views of the Longship's Lighthouse, as we would be continuing to head east before making a left turn north for final approach onto runway 34. Now, another new airport for me this, and to be honest, I didn't really think there was anything substantial here, but it did seem quite similar to St Mary's. In fact, the tarmac runway we would be landing on has only been in situ since 2014, and its construction was achieved in part thanks to the European Commission providing 50% of the funding. And interestingly, it's owned by the Isles of Scilly Steamship Company and the Skybus, a subsidiary of the company, and has been operating from there since 1984. Now, yeah, I do think they have a little bit of a monopoly on travel to and from the Isles, don't they? Anyway, uh, let's enjoy this exciting approach and landing, and I'll see you again once we're on the ground. I really enjoyed that landing and it wasn't long before we were taxiing back to the ramp. Now, I was a little bit late getting off the aircraft as the pilot had taken some time out of her own schedule to have a chat with me about the flight and yeah, you know what, I really appreciated that. It makes all the difference, doesn't it? It was one of those trips that had just worked out absolutely perfectly and that really is why I love doing this kind of thing and sharing it with you guys. It was, yeah, just an absolutely special, special day this was. Now, I explained about the sail flight ticket in my previous video, which I'll link to at the end, but yeah, in addition to the ferry and the flight, I would paid an extra £7.50 to get a bus back to Penzance. Now, well, it turned out that I was the only one who had taken up this option, so instead of a bus, the company had decided to send a taxi. Um, obviously, this is much more cost-effective for them. That <laughs> worked out absolutely fine for me. And, yeah, because the guy, Ian, was such a nice chap, I decided it would be a fitting end to this video and the day as a whole to do the summary on the way back to Penzance. Right, guys, so I am in the taxi back from Land's End Airport with, believe it or not, Ian, the singing taxi driver. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? And he has got his own YouTube channel as well, so check that out. And yeah, and I tell you what, I have had such a fantastic day today, culminating in that flight over from the Isles of Scilly to Land's End Airport. And uh, yeah, the, the crew were really nice. They were like really amenable to just like taking photographs, filming, and the weather. Well, it was absolutely fantastic. Well, they couldn't have wished for a better day. Anyway, I'm off to the hotel now, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and please join me on another adventure soon. As always, guys, cheers for now.